Hi, I'm Lyle from Made by Marley and today we're going to uh, redo a piece of furniture. So have you ever had a piece of furniture that didn't sell? If you're a furniture artist or have you ever painted a piece of furniture at home that you just didn't like and wanted to change? So why don't you follow along and I'm going to show you what to do. It happens to everybody, you paint a piece of furniture and in your head you think I love that, you put it out into the world and actually I did get quite a bit of interest on this but there was always something that I didn't like about it. So how many times have you painted something and you just don't like it? Well, it's just paint, you can change it. Now, it's always handy if you know what's been on your piece. If you've done your piece of furniture, then you know what the sealer was, you know what you did to it. So I did, this was my piece of furniture and I know how I sealed it. This piece was sealed with lacquer. Martin took it over to the workshop and it has been sanded. All the thick detail where the flower, there was florals all over the front of this have been sanded away. They've gone so that when we put, we're going to be adding lots of texture to this anyway, but still you don't want that underneath your, your own furniture. It has to go. So it was all sanded away. And then the whole piece was scuff sanded because it was lacquer. There was no wax on it, so I didn't need to worry about that. So this is how I prepped this piece of furniture. I'm going to use some of the colours that are on the drawers to add my advantage of layering up colours. So that's a good thing. And what we're going to be doing today, this is, is, is all going to be done. The whole piece is going to be made over with um, redesigned by Prima stamps. And I have elemental borders and tribal prints and these are both pretty funky and I love stamping furniture and I'm going to show you how to get a really bohemian artisan a bit quirky finish on your furniture after it's gone south before. So as I said the piece has been scuff sanded all the florals and flowers have gone. This isn't raised anymore it was spots and there was florals everywhere it's all gone and it's all been sanded down. Uh, once it's, you've had a scuff sand, you really need to do a good clean, a good wipe down on your furniture, which I'm going to do in a minute. I'm going to treat each one of these drawers as a separate piece of art on the furniture. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to open up all my drawers like, like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting not quite a blend, but just different layers on each one of these drawers. And I'm going to run through the colours with you in a minute. It's always handy if you've painted a previous piece of furniture and you want to rework it to work with what you have, let the, let the finish behind work for you. You could repaint the whole thing, two coats of a different colour and start again if you're at that stage where you don't have a piece of furniture, you just want to complete this look. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the colours on each of the drawers. So where I've got yellow drawers, I'm going to mix in um, sort of yellows and oranges and some reds. Where I've got greens, I'm going to do some blues, some sort of turquoises. Where I've got reds, I'm maybe going to do some pinks. And you're going to see me, I'm going to do a couple of them just to show you what I do. And we're going to layer on some paint onto here before we even get to stamping. To make it easier, we're just going to focus on these three because these are the three colours that make up the whole piece. Apart from there's no green, but we'll do the green later. So start with the blue and I am just, now you can see there is no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I just want to get rid of the white spots for a start off. Um, this, is, this paint here is not an Annie Sloan paint. This is a Furniture Velvety Smooth paint, it says on the tin but I quite like the colour of blue and it's got quite thick. So I think we're going to kind of do something like that around there. I'm going to do a dip in. This is Annie Sloan's um, Florence that's going on here. Some thick, some thin. Now you're building up lots of texture that you want. And I think I'm going to leave that little white layer there. Maybe because you can get like this. Uh, this is furl, Annie Sloan's furl. Let's put some of this furl colour, which is sort of kind of limey green there, just to kind of give it a little bit of texture. And that is all, literally, before we start doing lots of other things to it, I'm going to do just interest. So on this drawer here, let's get a different brush. And it's the red drawer, so I'm going to have... This is Annie Sloan's uh, Primer Red. So we're getting rid of what was previously there with the red. 
uh, like that. And then I'm going to use, this is a custom mix. It's kind of a burgundy I mix myself. Um, and I'm going to try and keep that white there again. And maybe some Barcelona orange as my sort of round here. You don't want to over blend it. You want to give it like you want to have these colors showing underneath your stamping. And this is where you can get really creative. So maybe like that. If you're feeling like you want to be exciting, you can use a palette knife and you can apply your paint with a palette knife. So you can go round like this. That will give it some texture on there. Now we're going to the yellow one. The yellow one, now I've still got some of this ready orange on my brush. So I'm just going to kind of offload it onto here. And then some yellow. Because that will make a sort of mustardy brown. Yellow here. Keeping that white section in the middle. And if you didn't have this previously, just put some white in the centre yourself. You know, they don't. So I'm kind of, I'm enjoying that. I don't think there's, I might add some orange to the outside edges. I like this where I've dipped it in my um, my palette now. So I'm going to add a little bit more palette colour here with the, the furl colour. My paint, my Annie Sloan's kind of, some of my paint's near the end. And so it's getting nice and thick now, which is ideal for adding a little bit of texture. So, you know, just, you know, have a play about with it. This is the fun time. So this one here, what colour could we mix into this? Um, try a bit of some of this around here. Yeah. So that is all. And as you can see, I'm not cleaning anything off. You know, that little bit of green on there might look quite good, actually. So let's see what, you know. Right, and so you've got the general gist. I'm not spending too much time. I just want to get all this down so it gets nice and dry before we can do any stamping. So that's those three drawers done. I'm going to move on to the rest. This is our first layer of beginning what we do. Now, I didn't have a green drawer to show you. So I'm just going to pull this one out and we'll do the green, this green drawer. And for, because this is a bigger um, surface area, we'll use a bigger brush. So I think we're going to do this one predominantly more sort of the furl colour and I think originally this green was Amsterdam green well, and Annie Sloan Amsterdam green put this along here this edge and you just you're not quite blending them you can clean off your sides and edges at the end uh, maybe some of this blue here I want to go over that um, I haven't filled these in because I think possibly I'm going to do something funky round about the handle area and it should probably cover all this up. So, um, and maybe a bit of yellow in here. There. And if we add a little bit of our palette knife with some of the yellow here and just got a little bit of the red on it which is good I'm not bothered about that and just take that right along I don't want that to look like that though you can see that there's going to come back through so just add a little bit more that down. so that's that one done I'm just going to go ahead and do all these drawers and let them dry off as you can see they're all completely different and unique okay so I've done all my drawers and I've bet you're probably thinking hmm but I know that this is what I'm looking for before I build up any detail now I really like it I like the use of color I like the composition of the colors I like the way the colors have been applied and that's why I'm trying to say take an old piece of furniture that isn't selling or something that you've done that you don't really like and have a go because you have nothing to lose I mean you might end up absolutely loving it and for the price of some stamps which you can use again I would give it a go. Now, to get some of this detail, I know that if you've followed me for a while, you'll understand that I love palette knives. Palette knives are awesome. Palette knives can do things that a paintbrush will never do. A paintbrush will apply it. A paintbrush will blend. A palette knife gives you texture. It gives you art. 
a palette knife, the way you apply it, how you move it, what you can do with a palette knife, it can get into different areas. It's completely different to a brush and you will never achieve this look with a brush. You can do your blending, you can put your colours on the brush, but all these other parts, if I wanted to move this part here, for example, I can move it with a palette knife. I can move it. I can move any bits that I want. I can move them up, I can move them down, I move them sideways. I can apply, like for example, if I take a bit of this red here and I want to put a bit of red on here, I can apply some red. I mean, I can move the paint around in a way that you cannot do with a paintbrush. It gives really interesting texture and we're trying to build it all up as much as we can. So. If you're, un if you're unsure, get a board, practice on a board. Don't go step away and go, oh no, that's terrible. Because remember, this is just stage one and it always looks a bit like a dog's dinner before you get into it. And this is the stage I'm at and I'm already really happy, but you're probably going, oh, mm, but it, it is all gonna come together. You just have to have a really good play. Invest in some palette knives. You can get lots of different styles, lots of different shapes. Um, I have loads of palette knives palette knives stubby thick ones that do different things and the big long thin ones it's just as happened to be one that I had in the stable at the time but some palette knives they're not very expensive I think they're about nine pound for about six on Amazon and they last for forever so palette knives what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go wait and I'm going to let this dry uh, before we start thinking about composition positive negative spaces and how we're going to stamp all this and the really good thing is I'm going to do something completely different on the carcass of the furniture so we can lift these drawers out which means we've got really good angles to stamp on generally I'm stamping on furniture this way and it can become a little bit complicated whereas we can take each drawer out and work at time but we'll let this dry I'm going to go for a coffee and maybe a cake and when we come back we'll get on with it our background detail texture is all dry now we're going to take each drawer out individually but what I've done is, this is from, now there was two different types, this is from Elemental Borders. Now generally, when you do stamping, you want to keep this hard border. This is going to be a way to line up your stamps, but because I've got lots of these, I find it easier when it's something long like this, and you don't want a lot of movement, it's best to keep it on there. So I just cut them up um, how I'd like them to be, and um, that way, I was trying to show you a part here. So I've cut this piece here off. This is the piece that's gonna fit onto this one here. Keep your stamps dust free and wash them properly and they'll stick to these things. So I have this one on here and this is the one that I'm gonna put to build up layers and to do stamping that really holds people in chest is you need to kind of build it up in layers. So I want to put a color on this bottom drawer so just pull that out um but i don't want it to be hugely darker than this color here if you know what i mean so i have mixed up a sort of mustardy color but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a tad oop, a tad more brown in this just so it's slightly darker than the shade you want to you want it to show up in some areas of this but not all of the areas so i think i'm kind of like you know, it's a bit more browny, but I think that's the sort of colour. You don't want anything too dark to begin with because then when you go to put other elements and other colours on it, they're not going to show up. So the best way to sort of deal with this, you can either apply your paint with, I have rollers. I have loads of rollers. They look a little bit manky, but they do the job. And the other way to apply them is you can use a brela there which is here somewhere in all of this here it is you can apply your paint with one of these one of these or you can apply your paint with an artist sponge if it's a smaller stamp I use the artist sponge sponges when it's a big one like this I tend to use a roller and I have many different rolling pads all in varying states of little you know sponges just so that I can put that on for that purpose okay so you make sure it all goes and you can just use just use a piece of card i mean it's just so martin can kind of get this on camera so you take your sort of initial color and um just kind of get as much now that it's going to really absorb this i should have thought about this before because my brush isn't particularly wet and i don't want to add a lot of water to this so um kind of get it I'm doing it on an awkward angle just so you can see 
So you've got your, most of it on your sponge. Now, you don't do this on top of your furniture, but I am just to show you. You don't need to worry about getting it all covered because you want that sort of distressed look. Put it on. Just going to make sure there's a bit more paint on that. And I want this band to go right across the center. So I'm just going to eyeball it. And this is where stamping is quite good because you don't have to be perfect. You can then, if you're using that technique with the roller, you can then get your brailler and go across it. Now, it shouldn't be too much of a contrast. Can you see that? Just a light contrast to begin with because you're going to be putting other texture on top of this. So you want to keep your colours very light. So I'm just going to do to the end of here and then we'll get on with the next piece. So this one here is from the Tribal Prints, this one. So it's a little sort of triangle-y one. And this one I'm going to put around the edges here. So I've built up this here. This will be our final layer on this because I'm going quite dark on this one. And for this one, I'm using the sort of... The sort of burgundy that I mixed up and um, this sort of kind of ready colour and I'm choosing this colour because I've put reds and different things. We'll get more colour in the middle but right now I'm going to go with this one. Now because I'm going with this one there is a little lip in my drawer here so it's not going to be perfect but this is the thing you really have to get over when you're stamping. They just don't always come out perfect and that's the joy of stamping so um, I'm just going to put this piece of clear sheet here so it doesn't go everywhere and put your excess off your sponge and then just run it along. Now because I've got it on the edges there you have to be kind of careful where you touch it up but I'll show you how that's going to go on like that and I'm just going to apply pressure with my fingertips. It's a distressed look so I don't want to push down on all of it and lift it off. And I'm just going to do the next one so you can see. And again, I'm doing it on the furniture, which I shouldn't be showing you that. Move it to the side. And flip it round. I want that edge to join up with that edge there. Like this. I'm going to go all the way around this drawer with this stamp. So I'm going to get on and do this and we'll reconvene again once I've done around the edges. So the next one I'm going to use is this one here. And I'm just going to do this sort of turquoise blue and I'm going to tell you why I decided to do that colour when I move this piece of paper. Because there's some here and it really works with the colour. I couldn't get this to stick to the back in, so I'm just putting this one on with my hands. In the hope. The good thing about this sort of kind of uh, building it all up in texture, you don't have to be precision. The layers are what gives it all the interest. So I think I've kind of pushed that down enough and I'm going to just join this onto here like this. Put that back up in there. The trick with this is you do not need a lot of paint. You don't need tons and tons of paint. People might think, oh, you don't have enough paint on your paintbrush there to do the whole thing. But uh, you just need a little bit because um, you don't want your, your, your stamp too wet and too sloppy. You'll, less, you'll lose all the definition if you do it that way. So just make sure you get right along it. That one there. And you know what? I don't particularly like this little bit there, so I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to do the top area as well. I'm going to do right, right to this edge and the top, and we'll be back again in a minute. So I've done my sort of turquoise blue round. I also sort of touched it here and there with the roller, just to kind of tie that colour and that colour in, because the only other colour for the drawer was that piece there. So that gives that, that even a little bit more of a texture. You can also see I've recreated the, see the small drawer that was yellow. I have copied this one, the same as this one, so that where these two sort of coordinate. 
Now, next thing I'm going to move on to, I have this one here, which is from the Tribal Prince. This big one. And I've got a dark sort of chocolatey brown. And I'm just going to use again my sponge. To make sure you've got it all covered. And as I said, it's stamping. You want it to look a little bit distressed, but you want the kind of the full shape to be there. So on that one, you know, kind of go a little bit heavier. Now I'm going to just eyeball this and hopefully put it somewhere in the centre. But again, this isn't precision. I think I'm going to do it about here. If you're looking for a little bit more precision and you want it all, you can use your your lino roller to, to, to do that. I like the more sort of distressed look, but on this shape here, you want a quite a bit of definition. Make sure you've patted it. All areas right to the edges, because this is our sort of focal point of this drawer. And pull that off. And that's that one. And... I think I might just do three along this one. I mean, we get into the smaller stamps and the smaller drawers, but I think for this one, I'll just do three. So I'll just do my other two and then we'll move on to another drawer. All three shapes are on. I've got this one here next. Ignore my fingers. I'm going to put this one here. Kind of touching there and there and there and there in the sort of turquoisey colour. So uh, I'm just going to get a piece of card to to roll it on make sure you've got it all stamping it is not tidy now I have decisions here can I either go this way or this way but I think I'm probably going to go here like that you don't need a braille for this one it's just little and it doesn't matter if it looks a wee bit distressed I'm just going to push that down onto there like that and I'm going to get the other one above it. And we're going to just do this here and push it down. And can you see how I've just built up layers? Our first layer, which was our distress, which was our paint. Then we did a lighter stamping layer that blends into the background. Edges, relief main event and little fillers all make up a really good stamped composition that one and kind of running out of room here so i'm just going to do finish off these two here and here and do my little ones on my little drawer and then we'll get on to a whole new drawer so what i'm doing with the green drawer is i'm starting with exactly the same stamp that i wanted for the interest behind the yellow one, I'm just rolling on my paint and you know the drill by now, I'm just going to do across the middle until we get to the edges. So I'll show you and what I'm using for this one is a sort of greeny mix and it's just going across the centre like that. And this is just the interest for behind all our other texture. And that's going to look like that. So I'm going to go on and do that. And then I'm going to go on and we'll talk about what colour I'm going to do the border of this one. So after I'd put the um, detail on the back, I moved on to the same shape we used in the yellow one, which is this little triangle one. And I actually did it the same colour of burgundy. It's kind of good if you have do have a sort of correlation between all your colours working. So you don't want to add too many crazy colours. And you don't want to put too many colours that um, don't work with the piece together. So I decided to, I opted for this because you remember you want ones, once you've done all your detail on the back, you want colours that will show up. So I thought this is probably one of the, the nicest ones that will work with this. And that's this one done. <gasps> Ooh. Never mind, we can fix that in a minute. Um, in fact, I probably even won't bother fixing it. So, 
what are we going to do next? We need, because we put a line around this one, let's see what we've got in the way of putting a line around the next one. I think this time we'll use something a little bit fancy. So maybe this one here. This one looks quite interesting. And we'll do this one in a sort of blue colour. So I'll just get a brush so I can get some blue paint out of my um, tin. My blue paint is incredibly thick. So I'm just going to put some of that on there. And I'm trying to find my sponge. Here it is. So this is one where we're going to we're going to sponge this one on. So back to our mat so that we don't make a mess. You can see I've used this one over and over. It has been washed. It just doesn't look um, very delightful. Put our stamp on, and I hope you can see this. Offload it. And this one's kind of like a sort of almost stitched sort of pattern on this one. Right to the edge. Right to our edge on here. And move this out of the way. And if you have clear backing, all well and good. Put it on, don't shift it once it's on. When it's long ones like this, I tend not to use the brailler. I tend to just use my fingers to make sure that I've touched all the surface area. And be aware when you get to the end of your piece, your fingers will look terrible because you're going over it all the time with paint. So I think that's good. Pull it off. And I'm going to go around my drawer now with this one. So this is the top drawer, which was the red drawer, and I stamped this one differently. I used the the, I used brown on this one and for my background I went along it like that and then I used this one for the green edging. So now we're going to put our detail on which I'm going to do in yellow and I've got an, another clean roller on my roller brush um, ready to go with the yellow. I might need a bit more yellow and um, let's just have a quick decide on what shape, I had it a minute ago, I wanted to put across the middle. I'm thinking maybe a little bit more of a detailed shape on this one, so I'm thinking of going across it with this one here. This one. So, get my piece of paper so that we don't have it on our drawer. like this, loaded up with yellow. I'm wondering whether maybe I should maybe put a little bit of the green in this. We'll see how this comes out, you know, the sort of furl colour, the sort of lime green, but we might save the lime green for the next drawer. So, and positioning, I'm going to do a little bit like, um, I think I'm going to kind of go in between these so maybe something like, like this. Probably get away with a brailler on this one. It's not too small. That's the yellow. So I'm just going to do my yellow shapes. And then we'll, we've only really got the green drawer left to do. And I'll show you that as we go along. So this is the last drawer. And I'm just mixing and matching. Um the colours and the stamps. There's the little one in the middle, but I'm going to talk about that one in the middle in the minute. Um, so again, this is just my sort of in the background colour. It's a little bit lighter than I would normally. Normally I kind of keep it more the same tones, but I want to make a feature of this one. So I'm bringing this one to the foreground. Um, just rolling it up. So as you can see, you just mix and match your stamps. It's all really about layering. It's not about total precision, it's not whether they all stamp out perfectly or not, it's all about layering that gets these really good stamped effects and looks. Um, I'm going to go on and do this one 
until uh, we get to the edges. So this one's going to have the burgundy stamp. Um, so I've covered this one in burgundy paint and it's going to be layered over the top of the light green and the sort of limey green for a different sort of look. And on this one, I'm going to put one here and one over there and then I'm going to put something different in the middle. So, and how I've just kind of roughly lined these up is I've just put them where the holes were for the handles because, as you know, I didn't get rid of those. There. And something for the centre. I have maybe this one going this way, I think. And now what colour to do this one with is going to be the question on this one. I think with this one, I might go brown. Um, I'll just leave that there. And what I've been doing all through this process is swapping over the colours of the rollers to the colours that I want to use. So this one here was used brown for the background of the top drawer. So we're, we've got, we know we've got brown paint on this and we know it's ready to go. As you can see, I don't clean my stamps in between. I'm not cleaning them. I'm just, uh, whoop. I'm just using the paint that's on it. That gives really nice mixed colours. Now this might not be dark enough, but we'll have a look. Right, something a bit darker. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to maybe do this and this on here. But what I'm going to do with this one is now there's a little honeybee on the on the top of my paint, so I don't want to disturb him. I'm just going to set him over there just now while I get a little bit of black for my stamp. You don't want everything to be overpowered with black, and I've been kind of kind of keeping black on the back burner till the end really because once you start introducing black into your you know it can go quite dark quite quickly so i'm going to use this one here i'll just stamp it off camera and by the way this this look does create quite 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 messy looks i think there was still quite a bit of burgundy on that so we'll see if it is dark enough yeah and I don't intend to get rid of, Martin, could you just show? I do intend to clean this and black wax it, but I don't intend to get rid of the black around the edges. I do intend to do something with the top, um, but I think the dark sides, although they've been scuffed sanded, I can refix them up. I will be doing something with the top though. There, and I'll put something else in the centre, um, possibly this one, going this way maybe, with the black. Now I'm glad I've got the black out because I was going to show you what I intend to do with the middle door because there, there's black sides running down the middle one and I wanted to put a sort of black accent just so it all kind of ties together. Now, as you can see, I didn't measure a single thing in this drawer. I just eyeballed the whole lot. And that's the fun about stamping. Stamping's such good fun. And if you do furniture for a living, stamping, buying stamps are a really um, good way to give you lots of different choices when you run a business of doing lots of different kinds of furniture because, you know, you own the stamp. It's not like a transfer. It's not like, you know, you've got it. You can use it again many different types, times and in different colours and it's really good fun. I love stamping. So I'm just decided that I'm going to put one on either side here. So that's that drawer done. I'm toying with putting an edge around this one. This one is the only drawer that doesn't have an edge and I think that's going to look a little bit odd. So I think I'm going to go on and I'm going to get the burgundy again and I'm just going to put a, or maybe I'll put this edge in black. And that'll stand out and pull the rest together. So I'll go on and put the little triangle edge on this. Fabulous. It's all been stamped and I'm really happy with it. It looks so much better than it did previous with the roses and everything on it. Now, I have a plan which goes a little bit like this. In a minute, I'm going to take all these carcasses out and I'm going to seal them over there. In fact, I'm going to wax them to bring out the colour. 
but these bits here I'm going to retouch with the black I'm going to touch up the black on the on this bottom part and on the sides and on the top I'm going to move on and try and show you something a little bit funky that goes with the overall look I've applied some watered down paint onto the top of my surface and I'm quickly going over it on top of it with stamps with no paint on it so all I'm doing is I'm applying the stamp I'm pushing it down into the wet paint and I'm lifting it off it's just to kind of give it a muted sort of effect that kind of um, emulates the front and pulls it together so I'm just going to do this it's just a hint of the pattern um, just a hint of it but it's it's kind of cool and so we're going to run with this on the top try this one next for this I just picked all the long ones that can go across which means minimal kind of going over and over and over it and it just you can see the texture I, I, I quite like this So I'm just going to go across this because speed right now is the sort of essence in this sort of it'll also pick up paint from other areas which means that you're going to get a really good sort of mix of your colours there's a little bit of a hair in that I have to make sure that doesn't go in my finish so here and the next one I'll move on to a different one put this one here and the thick one again this time I'm going to start here and I'm just going to work my way along I really like how this is how this is working out and it saved my finish because my finish on the top was not how I wanted it I had roses on it so it had to be sanded um, like the rest of the piece in the front so this is a way to sort of rework a piece without having to strip it all back down um, and I do kind of think it's in keeping with everything else I've done so far I'm going to try this thin one again and start it here so you're going to have to work quite quickly to get this sort of texture um, while well, your paint is still quite wet and as I said I watered my paint down so that it had this sort of I could print into it almost doesn't matter too much if your lines are not 100% straight either on this or maybe if you go over the top of it like I just did just make sure you push it all in and maybe back to this one again This one had a little bit of the turquoise from down there, so that will hopefully bring over some of that colour. Fantastic. This is very nice. And I don't know why I haven't done this before. It's mixing together. Don't worry about this edge. I'm going to paint that back in black. I'm going to do two lines of this. I quite liked how that came out and that just gives it some interest see the edge here and back to the, the big one again which I think is going to take us pretty much up to the edge push it down make sure it's all embedded into that wet paint and right to this edge now there's one part I'm not exactly thrilled about and I'll show you it's this part here the paint was a little bit thick and it hasn't pulled the paint off so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to see if I can maybe put a little bit of colour just over the top of this 
this part here and see if I can stamp this part again just to kind of put a bit of yellow into there. It's down over the top of it. See how that works out. Follow that a little bit there. Pull it over to here. Just kind of pull that yellow off the there. Now I'm going to let this dry completely. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch all these back up with black and I'm going to touch up the sides with black and I'm going to touch up the little joins in the front of the drawers with black and then we'll get on to making this piece some really unique handles. Okay so what I've done is uh, I just want to talk about something first. I had what handles I wanted to put on this piece which meant I wasn't going to fill in the holes because they were going to go right over the top of them. However, I changed my mind and so what I've just done off camera which is a little bit difficult is I have filled the holes and painted around them so that you can't see them because what I want to do is I have some, these are beautiful brass, they came off a really vintage piece and I'll give you close-ups of these when you know when they go on the piece but I'm going to put one of these central to the big drawers and there was little ones which I'm going to put central to the little drawers. So that's why, you know, you should always fill holes. But as I said, I thought mine were going to go straight back over the top of it. So um, I wasn't too worried about it. But yeah, live and you learn. Anyway, what I've done so far off camera is I have clear waxed all the detail in the painting. So this has all been clear waxed and the top colour has been clear waxed. The sides have been dark waxed to give it that sort of ebonised look that really richens up the black and you just, you know, buff it in with a nice dark brush. And then what I've done with the remainder of the dark wax on my brushes, I've just touched up the edges of here, just round it, you know, just kind of round the edges just to kind of give it that sort of depth around the edges of, of each um, border and I kind of ran it across there and a little bit down these edges here so that's what I've done with that so next I'm just going to go and put the handles on and we'll be we'll be finished we're finished so this was a pretty easy sort of turnaround from something that just didn't work and really I just wanted to show you how with some stamps you can work with the colours and things you've got underneath to you know then stamp um, your background, start with a nice sort of blend, use a palette knife and layer on your stamps and the carcass itself we did the stamping into the wet paint on the top and I have obviously waxed the whole piece and in a minute Martin will give you really good close-ups of everything and this beautiful brass, this is solid brass, this is <laughs> this is the real McCoy, it came out of a, off a, a really nice piece of furniture that um, I was changing the handles off and I couldn't think of anything else to, to put it on and it was Martin who said what about those so that's why I had to fill in the holes on either side because I was working, I was going central, I only had enough to do central handles and the little ones just look absolutely perfect um, in the middle of the piece. So I've been Lael from Made by Marley and I really hope you've enjoyed this video, uh, don't forget to to give it a thumbs up and uh, possibly share it. We're, we're trying to get our channel um, out there now. So, you know, if you want to share this with somebody, feel free to share and um, consider subscribing, leave us a nice comment and give it a big thumbs up. And I will see you again another day. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.